Anyway, both the councillor and those Chelsea fans might enjoy visiting America at the moment, which, as the news channel skillfully depicted, has turned almost exclusively white. There's frozen waterfalls, icy pavements, and hang on, who the hell ordered the delivery of more snow? Jesus Christ! Thing is, what with the whole planet being f***ed through a bin bag thanks to climate change, extreme weather is just weather these days. We're already getting so bored of extreme weather stories, the news has to give them snappy names just so we'll pay attention. It is Snowmageddon. Snowmageddon. Weather bomb. Snow emergency. Snowpocalypse. On snow, snow, Snowpocalypse Monday. What next? Serial chiller? Catastrophes? Isis? But never mind exciting names, the public was soon providing exciting visuals. Yes, lunatics were soon posting stomach-churning videos of themselves leaping from balconies, roofs and windows into the snow in the frankly narcissistic belief that God doesn't hate them and want them to die. Quite a few of the leapers did it in their underwear, leaving them looking like adulterers hurriedly escaping through a bedroom window at Christmas. Eventually, so many people wound up posting their capers online, the mayor of Boston had to go on TV and tell them off like he was their flipping dad or something. Something going on on Twitter where people are jumping out windows into snowbanks. First of all, it's a foolish thing to do. Um, and you could kill yourself. So I'm asking people to stop the nonsense. Yes, America has now officially devolved to the point where public officials actually have to go on live television to remind people not to jump out of the window. The news pretended to be fairly disapproving of the craze, labelling it stupid. Bad idea. Terrible idea. Worst yeah. idea I've ever seen in my yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No Especially way. in a backflip. But they weren't so disapproving they could resist showing the footage before pulling a face and directing viewers to find more of it on their website. And if you haven't seen quite enough of that, there is plenty more uh, of people taking part in the Blizzard Challenge. That's on our website, itv.com forward slash news. There's this Oscars thing Hollywood does to celebrate the best films ever made, as long as they were made recently. It's really exciting to watch. The coverage of it was amazing. I mean, it's got loads of famous people in it, so it's like a film, but better, because it doesn't have the boring story bit. It was exciting this year because two of our actors were up against each other, Eddie Redmayne and Benelin Thundercrack. They both played geniuses, but different flavoured geniuses in these incredible looking films. One of them played this sort of computer genius who looked a bit like Sherlock Holmes. You need me a lot more than I need you. I, I like solving problems, Commander. He was so good at computers, he did hacking before computers were real. He had to make a big computer out of bits of typewriter and spinny power station things, and it was so powerful it killed Hitler. He was called <laughs> Alan Turing, and the authorities persecuted him because he was gay. Then they drew a veil over it, which is where the phrase Turing Shroud comes from. And the other one played this sort of Austin Powers man called Steve Hawking, who got cleverer and cleverer until he turned into a sort of robot. Anyway, anything won, which was just amazing to see. Thank you. Thank you. People said it was sort of annoying them two got nominated. It proves acting's just for posh people now. But you can still act without being posh. You just have to do different roles. Like, my mate Paul pretended to be in a neck brace for six months to get money from a car insurance company. <laughs> and he won an award after he'd gone to court. What's clever about the Oscars is, it isn't just an actor's competition, it's also about films, like, it had all these different films that wanted to be the best film, but only one of them could. The best films show all the different things you can make films about, because there's one about a man, and one about a man, and one about a man, and one about a boy turning into a man. People said the films were all about money, but there aren't any good films about women, except Mrs Doubtfire. And even then they couldn't find a woman to play Mrs Doubtfire and had to get a man in. One of the favourites to win was this film called Boyhood, which was really clever. It was like 12 years a slave, but he was 12 years a boy. Being a boy didn't look as bad as being a slave, but he still had to do stuff when people told him to. Put that homework in your backpack. Well, eat! The main actor was amazing because he played a boy and played a man, and he played all the bits in between. It was so interesting. It was like a slow motion Hulk, getting bigger, but really slowly. The special effects were amazing. You could almost believe it could actually happen in real life. There was one called Whiplash. It was like the Karate Kid done in drums. Rushing. Here we go. Five, six, ten. 
probably the best film there's been about drumming since that brilliant one where the little rabbit wins the battery competition. There was a sort of made up documentary type thing called American Snipper about a hero who bravely hid miles away, peeping through a telescope and valiantly killing people who couldn't possibly hurt him from where they were standing. People said it glorified killing, but it didn't glorify all killing, only far away killing, which isn't as bad because you don't get any on your shoes. One of the films was called Big Bucharest Hotel. It's sort of like Allo Allo the movie. It was set in a sort of painting and looked like the sort of thing you'd have to physically hold me down and force me to watch. And even then, I'd be trying to forget it while it was happening. There was one called Birdman, which is about a superhero pretending to be an actor, or the other way around. Or both, I don't know, because I didn't see it because it wasn't showing at the cinema near me, because every screen at the cinema near me has just been showing Iron Man 3 on a loop for the past 400 years. And in the end, that one won. Birdman! Anyway, I hope they make more films so they can do another Oscars next year, but maybe less of them so it doesn't last so fucking long. <laughs>